Stein, my friend from Arte. Good morning. Comes from a lovely town in Belgium called Zonhoven, which means sunny garden. Stein, I met about seven years ago in Paris. I had a club, we've got a client in Durban. Been to the Arte showroom and phoned me and said, Mark, you've got to get this brand Arte for South Africa. So I did my problem. So I went and met Stain and I got the brand. And it's been an amazing trajectory over the last seven years. Arte being a very exclusive high end brand, I was wondering what the appetite would be for South Africa. And it's been unbelievable. Stain, I'll, I'll let you take over. And mm -hmm. uh, Pete, this is more of a QA. I mean, we had an amazing session in uh, Johannesburg because, I mean, definitely we've all learned a lot. And I'll leave it to you. As a short introduction, I want you to know that we are a family-owned company and we are in the second generation of that family. So the two brothers have inherited a wallpaper company from their father, standard wallpaper company. But they have the objective, the ambition to make the most beautiful wall covering company in the world. And that's the only thing we do. So it's not rocket science. We like to create beautiful walls in a soft way. So we are a soft furnishings company. And that is the only rule we have. That's the only thing we try. And we don't put ourselves any limitations, any boundaries. Or yeah, maybe yes, one limitation. And that is that we want the product to be easy to install. Easy to install, with which we mean you, every product we launch, you can install just like a normal basic wallpaper. Why is that? Not because we like wallpaper that much, uh, because it's a bit of coincidence how the family got into wallpapers, because we work internationally. The high-end wall covering market is very, very niche. And there is a reason for that. There is no need to cover your walls. You can just leave them blank. You can just paint them. It's perfect. They are clean. You don't need to put something. So it is already, it's an a completely useless product. It only makes the wall beautiful. A lot of people don't invest in wallpaper because there is no technical or not always a technical need for it. So that's why the wallpaper market is tiny. That's why we need to work internationally. And then it is difficult to find good craftsmen in some areas. But what you can find is a wallpaper installer. Uh, so that's why we make all of our products easy to install. We call this plug and play. Every wallpaper installer can install our products. That's very important to us. And that's the only limitation we put ourselves. So I have a question. <laughs> Who uses wall covering here? And why? Why do you use wall covering? It gives space, it gives space soul and character and it just lifts it to another level and just gives it another layer of... Okay. And In texture. Texture, okay, that's a good reason. It's more difficult to bring that with paint, exactly. Um, very good. That is for me already a technical reason. That's why people are using wall covering in uh, hospitality. For example, uh, all of the large scale hotels, especially the American operators, they are obsessed with wall covering. So there is not one large scale hotel with an American operator that doesn't have wall covering. It is even an obligation. Uh, before hiring a designer, they will tell them you do with the hotel whatever you want. But in the corridors, we want wall covering because we want them to be protected. Uh, and that has a very, very special reason. Yeah? These large scale hotels, they have one downside. Uh, they're large, so there are a lot of rooms. That is difficult for maintenance because they still have to clean the rooms in between. That's why they have invented this um, cart, the maintenance cart with the towels and the shampoo so that they don't always have to go back to, to look to search for that. The downside of that cart is that they push it into the wall and that they damage it. Nothing so awful as a damaged wall in a hotel. So that is why also there can be a technical reason to use wall coverings. Again, we just want to cover walls for technical reasons, for aesthetic reasons. And our design studio often starts with real product. Not sure if this is the ty a type of product that you know. This is real grass cloth. 
This is a product that has been known for a very, very long time. It gives a very natural feel. It gives texture. What some people don't like about it is that it's a natural product. So it gives a paneling effect. I think it's beautiful because it shows that it's a natural product and not a machine-made product. So in the beginning, when I entered this business, I tried to convince people of the beauty of this paneling effect, but I have stopped doing it because some people just don't like it. <laughs> and it is their right. Who am I to tell them what is beautiful? So if people don't want to see the paneling effect, we can solve this. We have plenty of products that don't have that paneling effect. A solution, for example, is making a design, an inlay with these types of natural products where we hide the panel in the design. But I was telling you that sometimes there is also a technical reason to use wall coverings. So that's why we always try to find an alternative for that kind of product in, for example, a vinyl. This is basically a plastic layer that we put on top of, a, in this case, a, a textile, a fabric. This makes the product 100% washable. That is 100% made for these large-scale hotels. You can put all of our products in bathrooms. I will also tell you why. We don't base our products on paper. We place them on non-woven. Does anybody know what non-woven is? It's, it's an, an enhanced paper. It's actually paper to which we add polyester and polyamide fibers. That results in a 100% stable product. So it doesn't change dimensions when you make it wet. And we have to make it wet because we're putting glue on there or on the wall or on the product. Uh, and glue consists for 85% out of water. We don't limit ourselves to prints or fabrics. We also use a lot of wood. This, is, this looks like wood. It is a banana leaf, which is woven and lacquered. But again, for technical reasons or also cost reasons, because hotels use large quantities of our products, so there it's difficult to use a handmade product because that is more expensive. So we will always value engineer our own products. So for also cost reasons, we often will get inspired by our own uh, products. This is, for example, real wood, a wood veneer. So this is handmade. This is a vinyl version of it. You see that we get very close to the original. When you touch it, you will always feel it. Uh, but this has the advantage of being indestructible and cleanable. This has the advantage of being an alternative for real wood. It is actually real wood, a very thin layer. This is a printed version of wood, so this is much more cost effective. We can produce this on, on a machine, it's industrial made. This is part of a collection we made for Moy. I'm not sure if you know Moy as a brand. Uh, so it's a design brand owned by Marcel Wanders. And as we are in the high end, the only manufacturer, so our competitors, they are mainly editors, which means they design beautiful product, but they don't manufacture it. Uh, we are a manufacturer, so we manufacture our own products and that is really an advantage also for you because it means that we are very, very uh, skilled when it comes to product. We are product developers more than designers. You are interior designers. We don't do interior design. We do some interior design for our pictures, but actually we, we see ourselves as a suppliers as a supplier in the to the, towards the design industry. And that's how Marcel Wanders got to us. Uh, we had done a couple of hotels together because he needed a technical solution for protecting the walls. It was in the Middle East where he built the first um, Moy hotels. Uh, there are two Moy hotels in the Middle East. Uh, and they told him, it's very good, you can do whatever you want, but you need to protect the walls. So we, he, we developed a collection for him because we have the technical know-how and the ones that know Marcel Wanders, they know that he is a very creative person and that he has a lot of design. 
And that is something that we do quite often. So we have our own collections, but we produce quite a lot for high-end retailers, uh, even car dealerships. In theory, yes, but of course, it is something that we can only do if the rollout is significant. Yes, exactly. so to give you an idea of the scale, eh, we are doing this for all of the stores of Louis Vuitton, all of the stores of uh, Dior, but it's an international rollout. So we are talking about hundreds of stores. We can also do some kind of custom. I mean, we can add or we can create different top layers. Eh? This is, for example, a 3D foam. Um, we can change the top layer for you. If you want it to be another color, if you want it to be another quality, those are things that are easier to do for smaller quantities. And for this type of product, for example, you need to count 300 linear meters, uh, let's say. If it's really a development from scratch, you really need to have or a big volume or a significant budget. We make our products plug and play. For us, there is no difference in inst when it comes to installation to this kind of product, which is real leather, and then this type of product, which is basically a printed non-woven. Price-wise, there is a difference. Huh? Here we are at 400 euros a square meter. Here we are at 20 euros a square meter. So I understand that your installer is going to be more afraid to mess up this one than to mess up this one. But there's no reason why he would mess up this one if he doesn't mess up this one. Because the base layer is actually completely the same. Okay, there is a difference. Here, you need to be more careful that you don't spill any glue on top. But honestly, if you work with pre-made glues uh, that are um, in the right or that have the right, right substance, and your installer is used to install wall covering, then he will not spill glue. The product. We, or our installers, always paste the wall. For a simple reason, it's easier to paste the wall. If you have to paste the, the, the wall covering, then you need a table, it's a bit more messy. So pasting the wall, it's like painting. It's much easier. But for some products, like natural products, things like this, or the real woods, uh, this is real wood veneer, these natural products are a bit rigid. And so there, before installation, you need to soak the fibers a bit to, to make them more flexible. Yeah, this is an embroidered one, but it is a natural fiber, but you have this with all natural products. There are two ways of soaking it. It's pasting the paper or just humidify it. And that's how our installers do it, but just because it is more convenient and it is cleaner. So they always paste the wall with a glue that is pre-made, a glue with a large open time. What does that mean? A glue that doesn't dry immediately. It's always good to still have some time to adjust the wall covering. A large open time, with that we mean 10 to 15 minutes, also not longer, but that at least you have the time to get off your ladder and see, okay, is this looking nice? Because that's probably the only thing that is important, is that your installer needs to love the product and he needs to think, allow him, pay him an, an hour extra, allow him to think with this kind of product, where do I want the head of this golden tiger to come? Do I want it on top of the wall? Do I want it in the middle? What is the most beautiful thing? Surround yourself with that type of installer. That's really, really important because we are selling a final result. Eh? We are selling, um, just taking whatever picture in this book, up. we are selling this. We are not selling this. But you need this to create this. Well, if you want this effect, you will need an installer that loves this product and that thinks and that treats it with love and respect. That's actually the only thing. Because it's not difficult. Huh? It's, I'm very clumsy and I'm capable of installing this type of product. And that is a first step for us. That is the only limitation that we make ourselves. We don't limit ourselves in materials. Huh? We use real leathers, imitation leathers, real boucles, laminated again oh, onto non-woven. 
we will use real fabrics. Once again, we consider ourselves as a supplier towards the design industry and our designers are more product developers than they literally are designers. Often we also start with a, um, a type of uh, real, real product. Eh? Uh, this is, for example, a very interesting collection when it comes to that. It's technically, or I can, it's okay, Mark. Technically, it is a 3D foam. I've handed them all out, so, uh, <laughs> which is the, the acoustic product that uh, has been going around. But our designers wanted to make a design that has much more detailed texture. And that is not possible based on, um, on a digital drawing only. So therefore you need an original. And that's what I mean. Often our products start with an original. Our metallics started with an original copper plate. Our wood veneers start with original wooden paneling. So we have in the design studio, we, we make those up and then we more or less try to find an industrial way of producing them. Here, we have created a digital design and then we have asked a um, Paris artisan who does plaster work. So plaster work for ceilings, mouldings, but also, I mean, he, he does really big designs on walls. He does this, for example, for the Cartier shop in, in Paris, uh, there he designs plaster wall designs, but the real product. And also for the headquarters of Lanvin, where he did the staircase. And it's really impressive because it's like a beautiful design and it follows the entire staircase. It's, it's four floors up and it's, turns around like this. So this artisan, based on the design of our design studio, made design by hand in clay. Based on this clay tablet, we make a mold. And this mold is being used to make the real plaster version. So this is actually what this artisan does and what he sells to install on the wall. Based on this, we make a scan. We scan this original. Uh, so we have, with this mold, we have made 20 pieces like this. And then we start making embossing rolls based on the scan. And we emboss the product and it becomes a tile like this. So it is a semi-industrial version of the real artwork. Yeah. And that's what we do at Arte. Yeah, we, we have a lot of um, Italian companies, for example, using our products on, um, on joinery and on cupboards. And we even have uh, Roche Bobois, the French brand, has an entire collection with our 3D foams um, on top because they like the soft uh, touch of it. So they built the cabinet and then uh, put our uh, 3D foam wall covering on there. What uh, often happens as well is the inside of uh, bar uh, cabinets. Um, we have this stingray uh, leather, uh, which they uh, use quite a lot for that. Uh, and also, I mean, we, we value engineer all of our products, so we also always have an alternative at a more competitive price point. And this brings us very close to where the wallpaper industry originally comes from. Because does anybody know where it comes from. I was, when I started in the industry, I was very surprised that 90% of the manufacturers of wallpapers, well, like not what we do, but real wallpapers, prints, flowers on a paper, um, were based in a very small part of Northern Europe, basically the north of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and the UK. So in, what is it, 300 square meters, all of these factories are concentrated. And the reason is very simple. We have a very cold climate. This is our summer, more or less. So wealthy people that used to live in castles, to make it more cozy, they just put rugs on the wall. And wallpaper is just a basic copy of that rug. And this is exactly what they did. They started printing on paper, which was the cheapest material they could find, uh, the same designs as were on the carpets. But we are now turning back 
to where wallpaper originally came from. So we use real textiles and of course we do it in a bit a more contemporary way uh, because otherwise you better just buy the old rugs. We don't use it a lot. Okay. It's only sometimes. Uh, and where do you archive the material from mostly or is it sourced everywhere? It's sourced everywhere. Uh, this one is a 300 year old document which they bought somewhere in, in Paris. But, and the funny thing is the pleats you see in there yes, are yeah. because the pleats were in the document yeah. and our designers wanted, they could have taken it out digitally yeah. without any problem, but they thought that the pleats were the beauty of the product. It's something what we did more when we were more a standard wallpaper company. Now, most of the time we design ourselves or we ask a designer um, to make something for us. Uh, Marcel Wanders, eh, his, his design team has created this design, especially to go to become a wallpaper. This one, for example, is from a lady that designs a lot for Hermes silk scarves. And she has made this design especially for us, so it's on, on demand. Because we get, a, we don't, we want to be different. I mean, I think that is the main goal why we don't buy uh, drawings like this at fairs, or we, we prefer to work with designers and ask them to make something special for us in a certain style. All of our 3D foams are very popular for, but you have to take into account, we don't design them as an acoustic wall covering. The reason is that the acoustic wall coverings that we know up to now are too difficult to mold. Not saying that in a couple of years, because we are running tests, uh, because this would be ideal that we have a real acoustic panel replacing these ugly panels that you see everywhere. But, and, and having the same design as we are. We are not capable of doing that right now. I think we will need a couple of more years. But obviously they have acoustic effects. Um, but a lot depends on what is on the floor, uh, if there are any windows. In, but the nice thing about uh, most uh, home theaters is that they don't have a lot of windows. We have two launches per year. One in January uh, during Paris Deco Off, because it's the main event for soft furnishings in the world. Uh, so then we launch between seven and nine new collections uh, in all different levels. And then we have a second launch in September. Don't ask me why we do this in September. It's a bit a habit and that is two, three collections. So we anyway have nine to 12 collections a year. We guarantee on launch four years, which is already longer than most, uh, but we have products that have been around for 20, 30 years. This is a design, for example, that was um, made for the very first Armani Hotel in Milan. It was in installed in 1994, and it has since then been in collection. And we're even using this design on, uh, in other techniques. We have it in a 3D foam, we have it in a normal print. This is a, a metallic uh, because it went on joinery over there in the bamboo bar, that's why it is a uh, bamboo and it's still there so if you're in Milan go and check on the second floor of the Armani Hotel there is still this wall covering and it has been there since 1994 and it will probably never go out of uh, and it's not an exception we have several collections that have been around for 30 30 years without any any problem sometimes we update colors that's probably the only thing that fades uh, a bit, although beige and grey don't really get out of style, do they? <laughs> we have three new collections, which we have here, which are brand, brand new. This is the Babylon. Yeah, Babylon, I've which is the Taos one, which you saw. Then there is... Then there is a natural imitation, so it's a print of uh, a paper weave, first of all. I've already showed some yeah. product of this that comes in really a, a broad selection of, uh, of colors. Really easy to use. Big advantage is that compared to the, we have the original grass clots and we have the original paper weaves, but these are 100% stable. Yeah? In, in natural products, there is a big color difference. Uh, this is printed, so it's print on unwoven. This is a metal foil. So it's again based on non-woven, so you just 
hang it like a normal wallpaper, but we laminate a metal foil, real metal foil on top of it, which we give an oxidation uh, process. It's again a product or a technique that ha we have been doing for the last 20 years already. The original was a copper plate that was used on doors in a Brussels house and they wanted to imitate that to have the same look. That's why they have developed this oxidation process. That's the small dots that you see. Theoretically, we could have printed them onto the metal, but our designers wanted it at that time to be irregular, like the real product. And when you print it, there is a repeat and they didn't want that. Now we've decided to print on top of it because we see quite a lot of uh, stucco paints uh, coming back. Um, and we think it's nice if it is combined. Some, it's beautiful stucco paints, but often they're quite dull. And we think it's nicer if you combine it with a little uh, metal foil. Often our products have a little sparkle, which is not always appreciated by designers in the book. We do this because, a l especially when you put light on it, a wall looks much more interesting when it sparkles a little bit. Know that it will be on a vertical wall. So if you look in the book and you have light on top of it, then it will shine a lot. We don't like really opulent, shiny walls, but a little sparkle makes your walls... <laughs> <laughs> I'll steal that yeah, from you. Go, <laughs> it makes, your, <laughs> makes your looks look your walls as if they are more alive compared to... A, they do that in the paint industry as well, by the way. Yeah. So these are the three new collections that we have now as our September launch. We launched them last week uh, during uh, Maison et Objet in uh, Paris. I would lie if I would tell you that we were a 100% ecological, sustainable product. But I also don't know any product. Yeah, I know one, if you want, because I had this discussion with the a uh, designer who's working on a new concept for Adidas. They want to open in Berlin, or I think it is about to open. Uh, uh, completely ecological, sustainable um, shop concept. So they're going to start with one shop in Berlin and they want to roll it out. And so he was telling about uh, this. It was during an event where you have like speed dating with designers and, and, uh, and architects. And I said, yeah, that's interesting. And what are you going to put on the wall? And he said, ah, local soil. So local mud, they are going to give a natural color and they're going to put it on the wall. And that is honestly the only 100% ecological sustainable <laughs> product. No, but it, it's, it's not a joke. It is the only solution. And then you have to be happy that the soil, which is just next to your store in Berlin, is suitable for that because you can't add anything. This set, from all wall coverings, we are probably the most sustainable and ecological one. Not necessarily because we want it. Yes, we want it. But because we are producing in the European Union and we have the most strict ecological laws, also the most strict social laws. There's no child labor in our factory in Zonhoven. To get a building permit for any type of production, you need to have your own water purification. So we purify all the water that is being used in the production. It's all, ink, all inks that we use are water-based because we need to be able to purify it and put the water back on the... Uh, it's used, being used as tap water. Right? So we are drinking the water that comes out of our own production. Once again, that is a legal obligation, otherwise you can't have a production uh, over there. We have 45%, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of all our electricity that is used in production is from our own production, basically solar panels and windmills. Again, that is a legal obligation, otherwise you, can, you can't build this factory. So if you want to have a sustainable ecological uh, product, then you should definitely opt for a European uh, manufacturer. Um, because we are um, amongst the most ecological and sustainable uh, manufacturers. So we are officially a CO2 neutral company. 
certified by an external company uh, called uh, Vinsat. Um, so they calculate our output uh, each year and what we have, it, it even includes my flights, my flight home tonight, but also the output of my car, of all of our uh, cars, of all of our employees. What I think is the very good thing about it, because okay, we compensate and we, we still have CO2 output. Um, but what I really like about it, it's costing us money. So that is the biggest drive, the biggest incentive to take our output down. Because if we can reduce it, we're earning money. It is the easiest way of earning money for us. Eh? Because otherwise, to earn money, we have to develop product. I've, I've showed you we have to do clay tablets and plaster works. And so the easiest way for us to earn money in the short run is to take our CO2 output down. So we have three people working on this constantly. Uh, and the funny part is we see ourselves having a CO2, real CO2 neutral production by 2030. That is not an issue. That's what they tell me. I'm, I'm not an expert in this. But what, is an, what, what will still be an issue is transport. Not transport uh, internally from us or when we source products ourselves because we, our supply chain is planned long in advance. So we ship in the most ecological way. But the transport towards you because you and your customers, you all want to be sustainable and ecological as long as the order is delivered tomorrow before <laughs> 11 a.m. <laughs> and it's the right walk. <laughs> and it's the right walk. And you're not packing the walls with your garden soil. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there we all have a responsibility. Eh? If, if, and I'm now pointing at you, but it's mainly sourcing companies from the large uh, hotels. They plan, or they have the possibility to plan long in advance. If they would literally plan six weeks in advance or even longer, then we would also be able to take that CO2 output down. Thank you, everybody. Stain is here to chat to you and the rest of the team. Thank you. Thank you.